Mm. Ah. Wow. Man. This is kind of cool. <laughs> Sit back, relax, take it easy. Kind of nice. Kind of like this part. You know, it's sometimes good, you know, to kick back and take it easy. You know, put your feet up. Oh, I don't mean be a couch potato, you know, because we've got a lot of those in America. <laughs> but sometimes you just got to figure out that the world is going to go the way the world goes. It doesn't stop spinning because you didn't have a good day. It doesn't stop spinning because you want it that way. You can't stop the world and let me get off or make the world go away. You know, or take it off my shoulders because, frankly, you're on the world. <laughs> and it's spinning around. So if you feel a little dizzy, that's why. <laughs> but sometimes in life, if you don't appreciate it for what it is, it's going to run you over. You're going to build up all kinds of like stresses and, you know, your body's going to start going, hey, you know something? You're making this twice as hard for me to live, you know, as, as it really should be. Matter of fact, life just exists. It keeps going and going. So why don't you just enjoy it? <laughs> Of course not. Your body doesn't wake up and say that to you. But its own way of communicating to you certain things are true. You may be, oh, I don't know, ulcers. You may have high blood pressure. You may have gotten fat and sassy or skinny and mini. Or you may be tall and short and whatever you may be. But if you don't take the time to enjoy life, to really take a look around and see what you could be a part of this thing we call existence, you might miss out on what God has in store. Because you see, you could miss like the little dewdrop that I have. Just one piece of dewdrop. Actually, it's not dewdrop, it's a drop that I sprayed my mister, but one little drop that's standing on my sheaf of corn, well it's not, leaf of corn, corn leaf, that's kind of like curled out and it's one little drop that's just hanging there and the sun is shining directly on it and it's almost like a little sparkle of a rainbow. You'd miss out on that. You wouldn't see the blessing that it is and I have to admit, I can only see part of it. Oh, now I see. Well, sometimes you need to put your glasses on and take a look around. Be thankful, you know, for your wife or your husband. Thankful for your children. There's something good about them. <laughs> thankful for your job. Or thankful that you're unemployed. Thankful that you live where you live or you do what you do. There's always something you could be glad about. I mean, to be honest with you, if you really want to be miserable, not only can you, you are. But if you choose to be happy, you can be. It's not that hard. It really isn't. <laughs> I mean, pardon me, go get a Hershey bar. <laughs> a little chocolate goes a long ways. And then you crash and burn. <laughs> oh, that's right. Nowadays, let's see, men go out and get a power drink. Oh, you know, wind themselves up. <laughs> it's silly. Really what God wants you to do is to slow down to be still, to begin to fade out of the rat race, which is what the world's come to, and to kind of get into his pace, you know, God's pace, the one that says, hey, don't worry, we'll get there, we'll take care of it, one step at a time, you walk with me, and you talk with me, and I got you covered. So I think I kind of like spending time with God because He reminds me to do that. He 
ensures that I will live a life to the fullest by way of leaving my will for His will to be done in me. He will rest in His love. The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you. We love Him because He first loved us. You has He reconciled in the body of His flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. God commended His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. His Son, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. You know, I can't help but think what a joy and a wonder it is that God would love us even while we were yet sinners. That God would care for us even before we were really as good as we are now. <laughs> You're right. I'm kind of amazed that God loves us at all. I mean, frankly, when I look around, it's hard for me to love the unlovely, much less the lovely. Both seem to be really unlovable at times. So it really amazes me that God's love changes us in such a way that we gradually learn to love our enemies. We learn to love our friends. We even learn to love our family, irregardless of what we've been through, because we discover that there's more to this God's love than man's love because I'm sure you're like me and if you've experienced man's love you know like puppy love well we know what puppy love is it's kind of like the love you feel for a puppy we know what a mother's love is it's kind of like how mothers feel when they love their children we know what a father's love is like because we've seen our fathers which isn't so good sometimes we've seen what love of country is like because we know what people do when they love their country patriotically we've seen what people do when they love their jobs or love their football team or love their hot dogs or pepsis but you know there's a difference with the love of god there's a difference that god's love causes us or is able to do in us because it seems to be beyond all that fleshy kind of love, you know, that kind of superficial love that we say we love, you know, like when people tell me about how they love their country, you know, and they love their servicemen or they love their political party. To me, it's all the same. It's flesh. It's just kind of like the surface love. But when you get deep down in, you know, when you really get down to where the rubber meets the road, man, you just can't knock God's love that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. Huh. I don't know too many servicemen that run right out and die for their enemy, you know. I mean, that would be a whole new army, wouldn't it? You know, like an army of God that says, Hey, I want to run out and I want to die for my enemies. Wow. That'd be kind of a strange looking army. Then again, Maybe not. It might make sense in God's economy. You see, God can do things with His love that we can't do with our love. 
when we try to love people, <laughs> we've seen the results. Yeah, right. I love you and I promise to be with you till death do us part. And yet, the divorce comes and what happened to death do us part? The love died. <laughs> That's what died. It wasn't the person died, but the love did. So you see, God's love doesn't change. Neither does it have any variableness. It doesn't go up or down. It doesn't stay hot or cold. It doesn't go more or less. God loves you, period, because God is love. That's his nature. That's his being. That's what he is. That kind of love. Wish we had a better word for it, but that, and I don't mean agape, but that kind of love is just magnificent or magnifical, as I like that word that comes from King James. It's so magnifical that it is beyond comprehension, beyond understanding. And when you feel it in you, it goes out of you to everyone around you. And they want to be around you when you experience that kind of love. The love that God wants you to have today. The love that God wants you to know today. The love that you could have today. If you just love Him today.